Hey folks, Dave Ashton Brenner here. Welcome back. Today we've got a couple questions that were asked from a bona fide bicycle designer and expert. And he specifically asked me a couple questions about the overall design and some of the design details of the AR3. So we're going to go over that. We got a big day out in the shop, so let's get to it. Hey folks, Dave Ashenbrenner. Thanks for coming out in my shop today. A little bit warm, but we're gonna to try to get through this as quick as we can. Uh, now some of the obvious questions that I had um, were first that, why did I use the square tubing to design the backbone of the frame? My bike friend told me that it's associated with the lower priced lower quality bikes out there and uh, as long as the steel is good uh, there's really nothing wrong with square aesthetically if that's a problem with somebody we use the square tubing for alignment uh, some of the things like the bottom bracket that I designed is made to align perfectly straight with the rest of the frame we'd have to um, you know fiddle with it or some recumbents have a nice system for that but i just thought this was a this was a great opportunity to stay in alignment all the way down the frame everything stays in alignment the chain guide is right down here and that's a flat plate it bolts on with a squeeze plate on there and uh, it just uncomplicates everything the anchor plate on the bottom here is flat so i know that's all true with the rest of the front end and uh, i think it goes along with the design of this because our uh, square tube aluminum uh, control boxes on here so um, I'm going to show you this front crank I think it deserves a little bit more um, scrutiny and I'll show you how this works and why I designed it this way this kept me up a couple nights so well here's another close-up view of how I designed this bracket this is your normal chrome molly uh, bottom bracket housing here and we're we're simulating that with these with this piece of chrome molly steel and it typically bolts on like this we have a plate on the bottom of it with four six millimeter bolts and this is made for adjustment of your crank and you can either adjust it to to the bottom or to the top you've got about a 12 inch range of adjustment on this and the neat thing about this this was designed to this one kept me up a couple extra nights. This was designed to go on the bottom. And what this does, the front of this becomes your torque stop for a mid-motor drive, like the Bafang motors. You can put the whole, I know a bunch of different companies make that type of mid-drive. And this is, your, this is the secret of keeping that mid-drive up on the front, like this. And uh, there's some other motors, Sanyo's and uh, other companies, Yamaha makes a motor, Bosch makes a motor, and they all fit on like a motor mount for a motorcycle. And what you do for those is you make a telescoping front end for that. And uh, this is much simpler. I've, if you look at the rest of the trike, I've really simplified as much as I can of the design. Uh, there's much more complicated designs out there, but we're real proud of this. This works really well when this plate is bolted on it pinches this in here and this will not turn and that serves if you wanted to use a uh, derailleur for your front chain ring that's you would weld or attach that we're going to make those available also but as you clamp this bolt down this can't move it can't twist it can't go anywhere so this is a this is a design that I've not seen anywhere else, but there, it, it might be out there somewhere. But um, we're going to walk over and we're going to talk about the seat next. So on the way over to the seat, let, we're going to talk briefly about the frame. I had a frame broken down here uh, for carton size. We were measuring it for carton size. And the frame was made to break down uh, into two simple parts, two main parts and they're bolted together on this T-cross member. 
This is all chrome molly. This is all chrome molly tubing. There's a rip here that attaches the rear stay to it. So that can break apart for shipment. This will fit in the carton that you receive this in. Keep that if you have to ship this bike anywhere. And um, it'll serve as a, uh, as a fold down for you when traveling. So we're going to take a look at that seat now. I really did design this to be uh, an e-vehicle. So it's a little heavier duty than what you'd find on a bicycle, which added a couple pounds to it. But there's a couple really important points about this that you should know. The spacing between the rear lugs is that so that it will take the standard between 250 and 750 watt uh, hub motors as long as it's not a geared motor. The uh, gear set on this one is a 9, but I believe it'll take up to a 10 on this cassette. So that gives you a lot of gearing latitude, and with the front option for the chain ring, you've got double those gears. So uh, with an e-motor, you shouldn't have any problem with that. I can usually ride about 70 to 75 miles uh, with a, a little bit of assist. I don't let the bike carry me, but um, a little bit of assist once in a while for me, and I can get a lot of miles out of this 36 volt battery. Of course, the options will vary for that also. Well, this is Dave Ashenbrenner. Thanks for stopping out to my shop, and you know what to do. If you need to know, put it in below. Thank you.